Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we hit back with round 6 of our F1 2021 Williams Road to Glory career mode. Yes, it's been a little while uh, since we did the last race from this series. Of course, if you missed out on the Canadian Grand Prix, definitely would recommend going back and checking it out. You know, a bit of an apology, we've been focusing on the My Team stuff over the last few days. Like I said, I'm going to try and keep this series, you know, sort of once or twice a week, if possible here, of course, alongside My Team. Of course, that is our main priority still on the channel at the moment but as we head towards the french grand prix we've got a lot of upgrades potentially coming in on the car let's just wait and see if we can try and get all those on there goes the redesigned brake ducts there goes the engine cover can we get the gearbox as well there we go and we have also got the rear floor under tray as well that should be in the mix without issue they'll be on the car ready for the next race weekend so that's really good then that has brought us back ahead of Hasta and pretty much in line uh, with alfa romeo as well, of course, means we haven't got any current upgrades uh, in progress as well, but we have got nearly 2,000 R&D points. Uh, so, fingers crossed, we should be able to apply a couple more before we head into this weekend. Let's have a look. Are there any more aero upgrades we can go with? Uh, the front wing end plates, we will go with that. That should be ready for Silverstone. And then, oh, we can't afford the bracket there. We can't afford any other upgrade, actually, on that side of things there. Can we go with, uh, yeah, we can go with the rear floor under tray. As well, actually, we'll go with the roll dampers as a little bit of a cheaper one. That should be ready for Silverstone as well. But I think that is it in terms of upgrades ready for the next Grand Prix. They don't really want to go with the durability one at the moment. The durability on the car pretty strong at this stage of the game. But yeah, heading though to France this weekend. Circuit Paul Ricard. Let's dive into qualifying. Right, well, here we are then qualifying for the French Grand Prix, and I must admit I'd forgot just how different this Williams handles to the 2 and 2 Motorsport car, of course. Now we're into Season 2. That car very much a midfielder. This thing, definitely not still in early days of Season 1, but fingers crossed, you know, we can get both of these cars up towards the front of the field there. It feels weirdly pointy through Turn 1 and Turn 2, this thing. I'm struggling to get it placed exactly where I need it for this, but we'll wait and see as to what we can do over the course of qualifying. George Russell looked pretty good in free practice as well, so hopefully we can try and get right up with the Alphas as well and see if we can try and push the Haas cars behind us over the course of this weekend. Fairly tidy opening sector of the lap as we head out onto the Mistral straight. Got yellow flags out towards the end. That's one of the McLarens having a couple of issues. They peel back into the pit lane. But yeah, we just want to try and keep it nice, clean and tidy here, riding the curbs as best as possible. Try and get a good banker lap in. My yellow flags out as we head down through sector three. Not too sure what it's all about. One of the Ferraris going a little bit slowly there, but they peel into the pits as well. As we ran through the final couple of corners, it's been a pretty well hooked up lap, if I do say so myself. This will be where we're a second off our teammates still. As we head up towards the line, it's going to be a 29.6. Quicker than the Haas cars, but a bit slower than the likes of Sonoda and Ocon. That's roughly where we should be then. Right, heading out then for our second run. I think if this one isn't great, we are probably going to have to bail back into the pit lane at the end of it there. George Russell hasn't set a representative yet either. It's not too sure how we stack up to our teammate, but pretty much with the Alfa Romeos and Esteban Ocon, who I think struggled on his lap as well there. That was a pretty tidy run through turn one. But like I said, if we're not improving, we've got to bail out at the end of this one and head back to the pits to get our third run in there. Bit of a mistake through the end of sector one. Getting a little bit caught out over the curbing, but that's okay. Heading now through sector three, that we're still about a tenth up at this stage of the lap. So we head in towards the final couple of corners. Rather brave through there on the way in, but we cost ourselves the run on the way out there. It is still going to be an improvement at the moment. But do we think we can improve by more if we go out for another run? We're two tenths up. I think no, it's probably not worth it. We'll dive in back in. So we'll throw away a couple of tenths improvement there. And hope that we can find a bit more. Right, so Schumacher has gone quicker than us at this stage of the session. As we get ready to start our final lap here of qualifying for the French Grand Prix. We need a bigger improvement than we previously had there. As we get away in a little bit of Kimi Raikkonen. As we get ready to start our final run. Get right over to the right hand side of the track. As we dive it down back in towards turn one. Breaking just between the two curbs. Keep it nice and tidy there. A nice chunk of curb on the way out there. And that was a perfect little run 
through the first couple of corners here. George Russell has gone fast on us as well. Not too sure how much more our teammates have been able to find in this lap. But the front end of this thing so pointy at this stage of the season here as we try and get the car rotated through the exit of Sector 1. That's been a pretty tidy run out into the Mistral straight there. And look at that, half a second up at this time of the session there. We've absolutely nailed the first bit of the lap here. Now we have to make sure we don't get too greedy during the second half of the lap there. Right, the curbing. Again, through the chicane, you've really got, obviously, so many of the curbs here flat around Circuit 4 Recon. This lap so far has been an absolute worldy half a second up on Antonio Giovinazzi in P16 there. Now we just can't afford to make any mistakes through the final few corners of this lap here. Let's just wait and see. Don't get too greedy on the entry. Make sure we get a nice run there. Short shift back up on the exit so we can get on the power a little bit earlier. And look at that. We're still finding time as we head through the final few corners of the lap. This thing is an absolute weapon over one lap pace there. Three quarters of a second up there. Yellow flags out in sector three. I'm not going to worry all too much about that. As we try and get the car rotated through the final corner. Get on the power down towards the line there. It's going to be a second. We found an entire second on this lap there. And where is that going to leave us? A 28-6. I think that's P13. Would you look at that? Bottas and Hamilton make up your front row there. Then both McLarens, Red Bulls and Ferraris. But P13 on the grid here for the French Grand Prix. Very, very happy with that lap there. Nine tenths clear of our teammate George Russell. And the upgrades have certainly worked for us heading into this Grand Prix there. Giovinazzi got relegated all the way down to 18th at the end of the session there. But quicker than Sonoda. Quicker by half a second. Over Esteban Ocon as well there. That lap really did just come out of nowhere in the end. And now definitely want to be trying to fight with some of the midfielders here. We'll have to wait and see what the race pace is like. Though don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. But feeling confident after qualifying. Let's dive in to the French Grand Prix. Here we are again then at Le Castellet for another round of this year's Formula One World Championship. Renault took their first French Grand Prix win all the way back in the inaugural race in 1906, but it was another 73 years before they could take their second. I'm sure Alpine will be pushing hard to delight the local fans here today. Six lefts and nine rights give us a total of 15 corners here at the circuit Paul Ricard, and a lap covers an overall distance of 3.6 miles. Average speeds will be somewhere in the region of 142 miles per hour, and they'll be maxing out on the Mistral Strait at around 205 miles per hour. It's race day yet again, and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start. And this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position, and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Norris, Perez, Max Verstappen, and Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, Gasly, and Fernando Alonso. Stroll, Mr. Monaco, Daniel Ricciardo, they've taken a grid penalty. And Sonoda, Raikkonen, Ocon, Mick Schumacher, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Russell, and Nikita Mazepin. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Right, well, here we are then on the grid for the French Grand Prix and starting P12 by virtue of Daniel Ricciardo having a penalty as well there. Of course, this Grand Prix, uh, the hard medium should be the way to go here in Circuit Paul Ricard. So fingers crossed that'll be the strategy we can go with. There we go. Look at that. That should hopefully see us through to the end in good stead as well there. But we've got to keep it clean and tidy over the course of this race today. Really, yeah, got to make sure that we keep our nose clean through turn one. Maybe, just maybe, there's a chance of points here today. But let's dive in to the French Grand Prix. Right, getting ready then on the grid for the French Grand Prix. Round six of the year here from Le Castellet. Waiting on those five red lights. And it's lights out. And away we go. They're absolutely reacted perfectly to the start as well. So after the brilliant qualifying lap, 
We've had a good little start as we head down towards turn one. They're getting between Stroll and Alonso. Getting completely rammed into, though, by Yuki Sonoda behind us there. How on earth did we get a warning for that one there? Sonoda, oh, completely out of shape on the exit of the corner there. I think he's been pushed round. So riding on board there with Yuki Sonoda there. You can see he completely runs into the back of me through turn one there as we try not to get Constantine it up. And then through turn two, just gets clipped by Daniel Ricciardo there. Tries to save it and just about does hold on in the end there. But what a start from Yuki Sonoda getting all out of shape. We, however, are still going side by side now with Daniel Ricciardo. As we head through Sector 1 there, trying to give the McLaren a big old squeeze on the exit of the corner there. Of course, he's in a much faster car than us early on this year, and a much, much quicker rubber as well. So we'll wait and see what we can do early on in this race. On heavy fuel, this thing doesn't seem to handle as well as I'd like to there. And I think Giovinazzi, uh, sorry, uh, Sonoda even, has already picked up some damage off the start there. Ricardo though, slots past us, so we have lost the one place off the start of this Grand Prix there, but don't really think realistically there was going to be much we could move forward here. I think we've kind of got to hope this one turns into a bit of a race of attrition uh, for us. You know, a couple of couple of mistakes for people. That was a bit loose through to nine. Yeah, if we see a couple of mistakes coming out from people, maybe we, yeah, we can try and sneak our way towards the front. Ah, oh, so unfortunately George then... Is coming in for his stop. And lap one, George has had to pit in, so I'm guessing he got caught up in all the Sonoda's mess off the start of the Grand Prix there. Yeah, Yuki just being far too aggressive after another disappointing qualifying for the young Japanese driver. But we need to try and keep... Uh, I don't think we're going to be able to match the guys in front. I think our battle probably early on is still with the backmarkers. Of course, still nestled in with the backmarker teams in terms of performance. But if we can try and keep Raikkonen at bay, or do we use him for DRS on our harder rubber? I think that uh, question is going to be answered for us here as Raikkonen has a look up the inside down the Mistral straight then. Nothing we can really do, nothing we really want to do at this early stage of the race. Now I think, yeah, it's really, really important we stay in his DRS because we almost kill him with a bollard. Yeah, to really make these hard tyres work in the way we want them to over the course of this first stint. We've really got to try and stick in the DRS of the car in front of us here. Of course, all these guys on the mediums, including Ocon, I forgot he was stuck with the bat markers early on this weekend. Not what he wants at his and the team's home Grand Prix. But yeah, for us to make these hards work, we need to try and stick with Raikkonen and then obviously have a much quicker car later on. DRS, of course, around Paul Ricard, so overpowered. Really does mean, yeah, you can try and make up a massive difference on the harder rubber here. But you can see Alonso starting to lose the back of the midfield as well. That Alpine, definitely the one slipping towards back mark territory early on this year. They're still struggling a bit with the balance of the car. I think we've probably made the ride height just a little bit too low for having heavy fuel on board. So yeah, the car very, very loose and lively. Oh, got our first few guys into the pits there very, very early. At just the end of lap five to be diving in here. But it's quite a few of them. So clearly, yeah, the soft tyres is not working early on in this Grand Prix. Very, very warm track temperature here today as well. Of course, that's probably what's increasing sort of the sliding within the car there, and that is, yeah, going to push Kimi Raikkonen okay, and I inside in the top, the top ten. ten. Things that you love to see, but Bottas isn't going to come out too far behind us. So, whoa, whoa, uh, yeah, that, that's definitely a mixture of warm track and no ride height. This thing's loose. Some information on Alonso, they're slowing down. It seems like there's some kind of problem with their car. And if Alpine's day couldn't get any worse, that is not the radio message they wanted to hear. Also, over the next couple of laps, we're going to see so many cars into the pits. We come towards the end of lap six. Pretty much, by the looks of it, most of the other runners that were on those tyres are now in. You can see Alonso okay, up in P3. Second of the car ahead. Get ready to use DRS to overtake. Well, we're using DRS, but we're not looking at getting ready to overtake him just yet. Yeah, I think it is, of course, Stroll and one of the Red Bulls that stayed out even further. I'm not too sure who that is. But, yeah, clearly trying to extend their stint or obviously start it on the mediums. Oh, so whichever Red Bull it was that hadn't dived it in already, they hadn't gone for a miracle strategy. Of course, with this being short qualifying, you can't really qualify on the alternate tyre. You've just sort of got to try and drag the softs along as best as you can there. Of course, otherwise you start way down the order. And obviously with how tight the field spread is at this stage of the game. Not really something you want to do. But I'm in a fourth place now, right behind Kimi, who's in podium contention. We're doing pretty well early on. Hopefully this plan will fall into place. 
Starting to wonder whether actually trying to get round Kimmy might be the way to go in this Grand Prix and trying to sort of use him as a rear gunner against some of the much, much faster cars that are closing in there. Ricardo, new fastest lap of the Grand Prix. He's got a little bit of clear air. we got yellow flags out. Who's got issues, though, here? Is it Daniel Ricciardo? As soon as we've said that, has Daniel Ricciardo set fastest lap and then the engine's just blown up on him? Riding on board, then, with Daniel Ricciardo as we head back down towards Term 1. There we go. Yeah, no, he set fastest lap. And I think the engine has just gone up behind him there. There we go. Huge puffs of smoke coming from the McLaren there. So heartbreak for the Australian here at Circuit Paul Ricard, the first retirement of the day. And they had grip penalties for this one. Ricardo had penalties before this race. So what on earth has happened down at McLaren? Now Alonso, with all his issues, has fallen back into the clutches of myself and Kimi Raikkonen here. But we got Bottas not too far behind either. To start losing some tyre grip around now. So Alonso is going to lose the place to Kimi as we head up the back straight. Can we get past the Alpine as well? A big lockup from Kimi Raikkonen. But we go clean around the outside of Alonso as well there. And up in a third place of the Grand Prix. Put some rubber back into the tarmac as well on the exit. As Bottas now trying to hound the Spaniard. Gap to teammate behind is 32.1 seconds. Uh, if we want to try and get past Kimi, it's going to have to be now or never in this Grand Prix. We're in a thin sandwich at this stage of the day. Kimi in front, Bottas behind him. See, even through the kink. Answer the Mistral straight there. Really still struggling for grip, but now we're going to use all the battery to the outside of Kimi Raikkonen there. We get clean past him before we get into the braking zone. Take a lot of curb on the way in and on the way out as well. But we're now up at a P2 of this Grand Prix. Absolutely loving this so far, and we're not far away. We already knew that, Jeff, so thanks for that one. Um, but yeah, Bottas now just behind... Kimi Raikkonen and Hamilton right behind him. We're going to get swamped in a second. Just you wait. Right, Bottas now in the wheel tracks. Hamilton as well trying to look past Kimi Raikkonen. And just look at the momentum Bottas has got as we head towards the chicane. Straight up the inside he goes. No, actually, Bottas not sending it as bravely as I thought he would in this race. So we do hold on for now. Are we going to see Bottas get the traction on the exit, though? I'll go defensive on him as Bottas, yeah, is surely just now going to soar around the outside. In towards turn 9 there. We'll slot back in behind him. Certainly not in a battle with Mercedes just yet in this series. Soon enough they will be praying to us for data and chassis design. But not not yet on F1 2021. There we go. All the other guys on the mediums as well. Now into the pits at the end of the lap there. So Stroll is looking pretty spicy Where for the second half of this window, race. You'll be on the mediums. Are we going to see Lance Stroll do exactly what he did in the other series as well? Of course, the My Team crew mode where he won this Grand Prix. But yeah, now surely Hamilton's going to soar past us. Don't really think it's worth holding up Hamilton. Don't think we're really going to get much say in whether we hold up Hamilton either. Have some slipstream off him as we head down the back straight. But yeah, Mercedes still looking absolutely dominant at the front of this field. Oh, so Hamilton in into the pits again here. The same can be said for Verstappen just behind us. So these guys have already picked twice before I've even picked yet in this French Grand Prix here. But of course, we're going to be taking the mediums to the very end there. And yeah, back up into P2 then. This lap. Push hard on the lap. So we're doing pretty well so far. We'll have definitely lost a couple of seconds to the likes of Raikkonen and co. But still in pretty good stead at this stage of the day. That big slide out onto the Mustard straight there is surely now going to mean Perez here is just going to walk past us. So we head down this straight over there. Lando Norris not too Try far to behind. Him. He might make a mistake. He could still regain the position. I mean, I don't doubt that Perez might make a mistake in that Red Bull, but don't think we're going to stay out ahead of him to the end. Love the optimism, though, Jeff. Let's let's get ready to pit. All right, heading through the final couple of corners, then getting ready to dive it in at the end of this one. Is Perez going to dive it in as well? Yes, the Red Bull does. Then no idea why the AI don't have to obey the pit entry. But yeah, so we are pretty much in a race with Sergio Perez. At this stage of the Grand Prix there. We've both making our final stop. Unless he goes on to another set of softs. Whatever reason. No. Perez on to the mediums. So we've gone with a pretty good strat here. That has brought us up right towards the front of the order as well. There goes Lance Stroll. Who's definitely going to be one to watch towards the end of this. They're heading back out of the pit lane. 2.3. We even make some ground on Sergio. On pit exit there. Where are we going to re-emerge? We're going to be like P11. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. We're P11 in the French Grand Prix at this stage of the day. We haven't got a pit again. We're going to be one of the... Well, I mean, not one of the quickest cars on track, but certainly not going to be slow. 
we could be on, I pray, I mean, I don't really want to see it for anyone having a mechanical failure, but if we get a top runner with a mechanical failure, we could be on for points for the first time this year after the heartbreak of Baku a couple of races ago. A load more cars into the pit lane here, so it is going to be moment of truth time. How many cars are we going to have to try and defend from towards the end of this Grand Prix? The Hamilton new fastest lap there, I think, has got the undercut on a Valtteri Bottas in this Grand Prix, but we're going to come out just ahead of Lando Norris in this race run. I'm sure he is wondering what on earth's happened in this Grand Prix. Get that Williams out of the way. Surely he thinks we're going to be lapping us at this stage of the day, but no, the pace has been real so far, but we are going to be under a lot of pressure in the next few laps of this Grand Prix here, trying to hang on with some very, very big teams. Let's see what it's like then, trying to defend from Lando Norris. Uh, basically impossible, I think is going to be the word there. We're using all the battery and nothing we can do behind Lando Norris now in this race. Back down to P9, uh, P8, sorry, Charles Leclerc right behind us in ninth as well. And yeah, Vettel only a second back in his Aston. There we go, another one into the pits at the end of the lap. There's Sainz now down further down the order. And of course, yeah, that brings us back up then into P7 of this Grand Prix. There is a real opportunity for points here today because Raikkonen, of course, is still sat in 11th here. So even if we lose a couple of spots to all these guys, Kimi is still right just outside the points there. Obviously, we've had a couple of guys struggle with issues, both of the Alpha Towers, if I can recall correctly. And of course, Ricardo at the Grand Prix as well has potentially, yeah, given one of us a shot. That being said, I think Charles Leclerc is about to romp past us in this race. Is the Monogas driver going to have a look? Yes, of course he is. We'll let off the battery. Again, don't really feel like we can defend from these guys right to the very end. So Charles Leclerc now through. Next up, Seb behind. Seb now creeping in and towards us in this Grand Prix. Again, not really going to defend from these guys. Want to get to the end in the quickest possible race time for ourselves, I think, at this stage of the day. Seb gets alongside them, but doesn't actually go for it. And we are going to hold on to the position this time, round, despite using no ERS whatsoever to defend. Seconds. Seb has royally mugged me off down through turn one. Fair play, mate. You deserve that one. As, yes, yeah, Sykes now less than three behind. But Raikkonen, seven seconds back and 11th. Surely, surely, unless something catastrophic goes wrong, points are on the table today. Here we go. Six to go. Carlos Sykes now will look past us in his Scarlet Ferrari. Nothing we're really going to do again. Don't think we can defend from him for six laps to the end of the scoring free there and yet yeah, now down in to 10th place if you can see the gap to Riken has opened up to 10 seconds in this Grand Prix. he's trying to defend from the Alfa Romeos uh, sorry from the Alpines even and the Alfa Tauri there and I forgot obviously both Alpines having issues this weekend Ocon just nowhere near the pace and also with all his reliability issues early on and Kim is acting as a rear gunner for us at this stage of the day don't think yeah unless we really lost pace on these mediums even if the Alpine snuck past him, I think Raikkonen might just have done enough for us here. And with five laps to go... Five laps of fuel remaining. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, we are looking solid. It's not even like it's coming right down to the wire, I don't think. It's just looked comfortable with the strategy for most of the second half of this race. Well, about to start the final lap then of this Grand Prix. Oh, one of the Haskars has gone Mazepin out of the race. Not too bothered, but let's see what's happened. It's the Mazepin then. Has he looped? It or I oh, must the engine must have just gone up on him. Uh, no, the engine hasn't even gone up in smoke, it's just kind of switched off with a lap to go here. And well, I, I, I guess you call that karma. Anyway, back on board though, with ourselves on the final lap here from Circuit for Ricard. And boy, oh boy, has this one gone our way. We've been getting close to those points over the last couple of races there. Of course, Canada had it gone right, we could have been really close to points, of course, back as well. It was looking all so good until it completely fell apart in the final few laps of that race. To be honest, we were probably saved by the fact the engine blew up there. Otherwise, it's going to be quite a disappointing result at the end of that one there. But Alpine and Alpha Tari with issues all day long. Obviously, Yuki Tsunoda bottling it at the start. They're trying to be far too aggressive there. Gasly and Alonso with mechanical issues. And Ocon just seemingly never having the pace throughout the entirety of the weekend there. Has gifted us the opportunity, of course. Ricardo's mechanical yeah, failure as well. Is seconds. As I was saying, Ricardo's mechanical failure as well was obviously the nail in the coffin and the open door invite for ourselves in at this Grand Prix. There, it is going to be one of the Mercs to come through to win. I think it's Hamilton. No, it's Bottas again. 
to take home another race victory and further extend his lead in the World Championship. Hamilton does come through for P2 there. The Red Bulls of Verstappen and Perez in third and fourth. But for us, round in the final couple of corners here, this is a huge amount of prize money on the line for Williams as well here at the final corner. We're going to come 10th here at the French Grand Prix. That is exactly what you love to see. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Another superb French Grand Prix comes to an end, and it's a thoroughly deserved victory. And talk to me, what do you think it was that sealed the win for them? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalise on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. So let's review the updated driver's standings. More points for Valtteri Bottas, further solidifying his lead at the top of the table. So, Anthony Davidson, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Well, Lance Stroll would be my pick. He managed to keep a cool head today whilst pushing through the field. Let's move on to the constructors. Mercedes continue to extend their lead. Another team that excelled today was Williams, who make further progress up the table. I'm equal parts exhausted and elated with this weekend of Formula One. Be sure to join us for the next one. Well, there we are then, guys. The end of the French Grand Prix. And Bottas pole, fastest lap race victory there, albeit only by half a second, further extending his lead at the top of the table. Hamilton P2 ahead of Perez and Verstappen. That means Mercedes, yeah, further extend their lead as well. There, Lance Stroll in fifth there did a good job on the one stop ahead of Norris, Leclerc, Vettel, Sainz and ourselves. Yes, Williams back inside the top ten there. Their first points since the 2019 German Grand Prix as well. It's been a long time coming and happy that we can finally get the points on the board for the team there. Beating out the Alpines of Alonso and Ocon there. Raikkonen in a P13. They're ahead of Gasly, Giovinazzi, Schumacher, Sonoda, Russell, Maspin still classified two laps down and Daniel Ricciardo not making it to the checkered flag. They're a very, very disappointing day for both Sonoda and Russell. Way, way off the rear of the field there. Does mean championship-wise... We jumped Yuki Sonoda as well there somehow. Not too sure we managed that on count back, but we'll take it. Verstappen back up into fourth place ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. Lando Norris gets to jump on Leclerc and Stroll gets to jump on Pierre Gasly as well. There's been now just one point uh, behind Fernando Alonso as well there. But we're also ahead of Esteban Ocon, who is having a torrid start to the year in his Alpine car as well there. Constructors-wise, yep, one point behind Alpine now as well, of course. And one point ahead of Alfa Romeo and Haas. Like we said, that could be critical come the end of the year here. But if we get a couple of more lucky results, keep the upgrades building, we might just be able to give Alpine a run for their money as well over the course of this championship. But thank you all so much for watching this video. A massive thank you as well, obviously, for sticking with the Williams Road to Glory as well. I know it's been a long time, but like I said, we're going to try and get a bit more consistent with it over the coming weeks and months here. As we slowly, you know, my team might not become as rigorously a daily upload on the channel as well. But thank you all so much for watching. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon. We're around seven of the year. We head to the Austrian Grand Prix. Took me a second to remember, but looking forward to it. Of course, none of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to the Travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David and Ben for becoming channel members. Of course, if you want to be featured in these end clips below, make sure you click that join button and you'll get access to some other exclusive perks as well.